Hey everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about four different tips that you're going to need to know in order to pass your air brake exam to get your CDL license. Now, if you're looking to get your CDL license, you might be worried about this whole air brake thing. Like you've probably been hearing this thing a lot about, oh, what are air brakes? And you've probably been doing a little bit of research and it can get super confusing. So in this video, we're actually going to be breaking down a lot of the air brake components and try to make it as simple as possible for you in order for you to pass the air brake written exams and the actual road test itself. So what are air brakes? And let's talk about that. So let's talk about air brakes. And the first tip was going to be understanding the overall view of the air brake system. So there's a huge difference between air brakes and hydraulic brakes is which what you're probably used to in your cars which means every time you press on the foot brake on your car it's actually going to send oil through the brake lines and then that's going to actually engage the brakes for your car when it comes to tractor trailers or cdl vehicles most of them actually have air brakes which means it's a similar type of mechanism but you're pressing on the foot brake and air is actually going through why would they use air over oil simply because air passes a lot through a lot faster it's lighter than oil and also it's there's so much of it and it's more powerful air pressure is a lot more powerful than oil pressure because when it comes to the actual air itself we're going to need to get it to 125 psi and we're going to explain that a little bit more so when it comes to the overview of the air brake system in your tractor trailer or your cdl vehicle let's try to keep it as simple as possible when you have air in your system, that means you can move the vehicle. If there's no air in the system, that means you cannot move the vehicle. So there's gonna be a few components in the air brake system that you're gonna to have to understand. Component number one is gonna be your air compressor. The job of your air compressor is located in your engine, and that job is to turn on and push air into the air tank. The second component that you have to talk about is gonna be the governor. When it comes to the governor, it does exactly what it sounds like. It's actually the boss of the air compressor. When the air tank is full, the governor is going to say, hey, compressor, stop pushing out air. We're done. You don't need to work anymore. When the air tank is not full, then the governor is going to say, hey, air compressor, turn back on. Let's get this thing going. When the air tank is not full, the governor is going to tell the air compressor, hey, let's get your ass to work because we still need more air in the system. And if we have no air, that means we're going to have an issue with brakes, right? So those are the first two components you have to talk about. When it comes to the third component, you have to understand where the air actually goes. So it goes from the air compressor into your air tanks. From the air tanks, there's a bunch of lines leaving the air tank that go to the individual wheels where they have what's called brake chambers, all right? So there's two parts of the brake system. First part of the brake system is gonna be the emergency brake system. So there's two parts of the brake system. The first part of the brake system is gonna be called the emergency brake system, which means in the case of emergency or in parking, then you're gonna use that system. The second system is gonna be called the service brake system or your foot brake system. So let's kind of give you a quick overview of how that works. So we already had the air compressor. It pushed all the air into the air tank. The air tank is now full. You're gonna actually have inside the cab two buttons that look like this, which is gonna be your parking brakes. You're gonna have a yellow and a red if you're in a tractor trailer, if you're in a bus or a box truck, you're only gonna have one of those. That being said, when you push those buttons in, what actually is gonna happen is, it's going to move air out of the air tank through the air lines to what's called the brake chambers. It's gonna fill up the brake chambers, which is going to release the spring that's engaged in the brake, and then you're able to move. Like I said in the beginning, if you have air, you can move. If you have no air, you cannot move. So when you pull those brakes out, then you're going to push and pull the air out of the system and now the brakes are going to lock up because now the springs engage and there is no air inside the system which means like i said you cannot move pretty simple i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible right einstein once said make things as simple as they can be but not simpler now that you understand how the emergency system works the foot brake system works a little bit different when you actually push your foot on the brake it's then going to push air through the air lines and it's going to engage a different part of the brake chamber which is going to apply the brakes on the actual tires itself. Now if this is completely new to you, don't worry, when you're a student here at Driving Academy we'll walk you through this both in our classroom and physically on the truck so you're going to have a lot better understanding of what's going on here. You understand the air compressor, the governor, the air tanks, and the two systems and of course we can get into a whole lot more detail but that kind of gives you the overview of it. So. 
the next thing that you have to understand is going to be the pre-trip versus the air brake test. So when it comes to the road test portion itself, there's going to be two types of inspection. You're going to have to do what's called a pre-trip inspection, which is the outside inspection. And then the inside inspection is going to be your air brake test, right? So the air brake test is actually going to test if there's any leaks in the system. So let's go through an air brake test real quick. Let's see how, if you can catch up. Take out your notepad. Let's go. Step one, turn on the engine. Make sure you do a safe start. Step two, make sure you build up to 120 PSI with that governor that we talked about, right? The, air the governor is going to push air into the tanks. Step three is going to be shut the engine off. Step four is going to be make sure the truck is secure, whether it's in first gear with the transmission or the wheels of truck, and then release your air brakes. Step five is going to be make sure you wait one minute with your foot on the brake and you cannot lose more than four PSI if you're in a tractor trailer class A or three PSI if you're in a tractor trailer class B. And you have to make sure you wait that whole minute because what's actually happening is we're flooding all of those airlines with actual air. And the only way to actually find out if there's a hole or leak in any of those lines is actually fill it up with air. And you'll see if the air pressure starts to uh, drop dramatically. And if it does, usually means you have a leak in the air system. After you're done with that, now it's time to test the actual low warning light buzzer. We talked about the emergency brakes. So at this point, we're going to pump on the brakes until you get to about 55 PSI. At 55, at 55 PSI, you're going to see a low air warning buzzer. And then that's going to warn you that, hey, we're getting low on air. Because what happens when we have no air in the system? We cannot move. So we want to make sure we always have air so we can move. And then we're going to continue this brake pumping on the brakes until we get to 20 to 45 PSI. And in between that range, that is when the pull parking brakes should pop out automatically. And that means that the emergency brakes are working correctly. And that's pretty much the entire air brake check. From there, we teach our students how to do an in-cab inspection, which is inspecting the inside of the vehicle, make sure you have all the proper equipment, making sure that we have all the lights working and all that stuff. And then we finish it off with a nice drum roll and we call that a tuck test. So we've made sure that there's no major leaks in the system. And then we also wanted to make sure that the actual service brakes are working. So if you're gonna attract the trailer, you're going to engage the parking brake for the trailer, release the parking brake for the tractor and give it a little bit of gas and you should not move. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the tractor versus the trailer. And then you're gonna pull up five to 10 feet and press on the service brake and make sure you actually stop. And that pretty much concludes the air brake test. Now I know I spoke super fast. If this is your first time hearing about it, you probably think I'm speaking this language over here like Chinese or Mandarin or like something else that you have no idea what you're talking about. That being said, we are experts at teaching you exactly step by step how to perform this test nice and easy. If you want to watch some of our videos on YouTube, we've got a bunch of them on air brakes specifically. But if you want the best truck driving school in the entire country to train you on how to pass this, then I definitely recommend checking out our website, cdldrivingacademy.com. Again, cdldrivingacademy.com. Find the location that's nearest you, and then we're definitely here to help you and guide you through the process itself. So now the third tip that we're going to give you is going to be the biggest mistake that people actually make when it comes to air brake tests. So when it comes to air brake tests, one of the biggest things that they actually do is going to be they don't actually describe and perform the actions that need to be done. So when it comes to describing and performing, that means you have to use your mouth and use your body during the test itself, which means if you're going to turn off the key and turn the key back to the on position, you physically have to do that, right? Other things that people mess up is when they get nervous, they just skip a step. And if you skip one step on the air brake test, you fail. That's something that we definitely want you to avoid because we do not want to see you cry. Seeing grown men cry or grown women cry is not the best thing in the world. And believe me, I've seen a whole lot of it simply because of simple mistakes. And for the fourth and final tip on how to make sure you pass your air brake exam, drum roll please going to be how to prepare for the test so a lot of people actually get this part wrong they kind of wait till the end to actually prepare this thing but the first thing i would do is really understand the overall view of it right so definitely watch the youtube video on how we actually perform an air brake test correctly from there we give you a step-by-step -step guide on step one step two step three and we break it down to three different sections so while what we ask our students to do is okay just master section number one right Make sure you can do that without the paper and making sure that you can describe it and do it at the same time. Now, once you master that, let's go to step two and then let's go to step three, so on and so forth until we get everything in order. 
Now, if you do that since the beginning of your training, like we ask our students to do, there's gonna, not going to be any issue because it's going to be repetition and you're going to be doing it at least once a day. The other thing you can do and a lot of students find success in is actually finding and doing and pretending that you can do this in your nervousness only comes when you're not prepared so our job is to help you become prepared and give you the steps that you need to follow so you can be successful so i hope you enjoyed this video where we kind of broke down the best ways on what air brakes are and why air brakes are important and show you exactly how to get your air brakes past the very first time as long as you follow our steps but if you want more hands-on training if you want to come to the best truck driving school in the entire country i definitely recommend coming in to driving academy where we're here to guide you every step of the way from start to finish no matter what part of the process that you're in we're open up seven days a week we offer payment plans all you need is 500 dollars down to get started and then we could definitely work out a payment plan for the rest and we also offer lifetime job placement as well so Check out our website, cdldrivingacademy.com. Again, I said cdldrivingacademy.com. Thank you and have a fantastic day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.